OK, so welcome to um, the reading workshop for year two. I just mentioned that I know you're experts in our school now because you're most of your children have been here since foundation stage or at least in another setting. Um, so you understand how the foundation stage and year one works. Um, but it's nice to recap some of the things that are slightly different in year two um, and, and just to have some reminders. So some of it will be a bit of a recap and then some of it will be a little bit of new information that I've got. So at Westcott, you know, or hopefully you know by now, we place a, a real importance on reading. It's really important for us to get that right from such a young age and to instill a love of reading so that the children will want to go on, will want to read um, and will be skilled in that area. Because we know reading opens the doorways to lots of other opportunities the whole curriculum um, and a really important skill to learn. It's not the be all and end all, but it is really important. So there's two skills for reading. As you'll know, your children have gone through the phonics and word recognition phases. They are very key to foundation stage in year one. And they do continue into year two. And I'll come on to that in a minute when I talk um, later on about spellings. Um, still really important and we still recap all of the sounds the children have learnt but there is a, a little bit less focus on the phonics because by this stage hopefully they've they've got that sorted they've got that code they understand it and they are confident with those sounds and to be able to decode, word, decode words the other part of reading is all about understanding and this is um, sometimes the area that children find a little bit more difficult and it's the area that really sort of becomes the focus for year two and into key stage two when they're in year three up to year six in preparation, dare I say it, for their year six sats. Um, I have to tell you, my son is now in year six, my eldest, and I can't believe how quickly that journey has happened, particularly from year two. It seems to have flown by. Um, so I do think it's important to mention that, that we know that that's sort of our end phase. Understanding is all about the inference, meanings of words and why the author's chosen to select certain words. What other words could we use? Um, and, and it's all those aspects, retrieval of information, those types of questions. So at Westcott, you know, we are a little wandles, letters and sounds school we have been for the last couple of years so we feel like that's really embedded in our practice now um, and our reading is taught in it's part and parcel of that phonics program so we have the reading practice sessions and we have our reading practice books that we do um, in school three times a week now some of your children in year two will start moving away from the reading practice books and they, once they finish the program, we then move on to colour banded books. So from purple onwards, it's their colour banded. But we teach it exactly the same way as we have been teaching it. We still do those three reads a week. One of the reads will focus on word recognition, any new vocabulary. And we get lots of that in year two because the books are richer. They've got more content. So the vocabulary is faster. So we do cover new vocabulary. And then the second read is all about prosody. So that's about putting expression in the way we read. And the reason for that is it helps with the meaning, helps us to understand the meaning. And then the third read is all about comprehension. So developing that understanding, asking those different question types that eventually will come up as a written question and they have to answer. But we do it very verbally at this age. So it might be a retrieval question or an inference question or why do you think the author's chosen that word? Which other word might you choose? And that sort of thing. The books are still fully matched to where the children are in their, um, their, read, uh, their phonics or their reading phase um, if they've gone onto the colour banded books. And we monitor that and assess that every half term. So when we feel the red children are ready to move on, we'll move them on. There's still a real range of fiction and non-fiction books um, and we try to make sure those books are high quality texts. 
in addition to their reading practice books because we like them to have lots of opportunities to read if they want to they've also got the sharing books which are the home readers and they are colour banded so it will be very similar to their reading practice book but there may be words in there or, or sounds that might be a bit trickier depending on which stage your child's at so they are ones that we share and help them with um, but by and large, they should be able to read them pretty much by themselves as well. And then you have your library book. And the really great thing about the sharing books and the library books is the children have a choice. They choose the books. They have some ownership over their own reading. And the reason for that is so that they it, it's developing that pleasure, isn't it? If you're always told what to read, they won't necessarily want to read it. So it gives them some choice because the reading practice book will be selected for them. So we like to let them have choice as well. So I mentioned this last year, if you came to my workshop and I always mention it, we, I, in an ideal world, we'd love the children to read every day in school and at home, but we need to be realistic. The children have other interests. They want to see friends, family, clubs, they might have events on. And, and they're really important things too when the children are young and you don't, want to miss them because the school wants you to read every single day what I would say is read as often as possible there might be some weeks that you manage it four or five times there might be other weeks that you can only do the three and we do say a minimum of three we do see the children that read more regularly the progress is quicker because it's um with younger children you need little and often practice um particularly if something reading it might be you you don't have to read a whole book. The books will be getting longer for your children. You might only read a few pages, but read them and ask questions so you make it a worthwhile read. You don't have to read pages and pages because we're also thinking about developing that understanding of what we're reading as well. Also share books with your children. Bedtime stories are still great at this age. Go to the library. Let them see you read if you love reading, because then it shows that it's a lifelong skill and everybody does it. We always read to the children as well. End of the day. Um, children love stories. I try to make sure in my assemblies we've always got a story that links to the theme or the meaning, because I find the children engage with it more and learn the lessons more through stories um, and they just love it. And we want to make sure we continue that excitement and love of reading throughout their education so you've got the home reading diary which is a communication it's more for you to write in to communicate with us um, please feel free to put messages in there for the teacher um, and we'll always write the book that they've taken home that need the reading practice book that needs to come back that's the one we monitor a bit more closely because it's really important we look after those books so that's the reading and that's something you're very familiar with and that won't have changed that much other than the books um, gradually get longer um, and harder. So in year two with the phonics and, and we move more on to a spelling focus. So that phonics is really all that phonics knowledge that they've learned in foundation stage year one is really going to help them with their writing and their spelling. The first five or half a term is we recap lots of the year one phase five work that we did just because it's good to go over that they've had a six week holiday and we want to make sure that they haven't lost any of that learning because that really helps them and um, particularly when they do spelling because lots of those patterns come up in the words that we look at with the spelling some of the children may need to carry on with phonics and that will be targeted at those specific children but on the whole, we like to move on to really focusing on spelling. And that still helps them with their reading because we look at the patterns in spelling words um, and we still do tricky words. So it, it, it's still very important for their reading. This year, we are moving over. Little Wandle um, have brought in a spelling programme and it is very, very new. It's come in this September. September so I can't tell you an awful lot about it because it's new for us too um, we wanted to continue with Little Wandle because it follows the theme and all of the training and um, for staff and information for parents is really high quality and it's there and available for us all the time we were using um, 
spelling shed, which was really good, but we are we want to continue with the Little Wandle programme. So it's taught daily, just like phonics. It will be within that slot that we'd normally have for phonics in the day and for up to 30 minutes. Some of the lessons are shorter. Some of them will take a bit more time. So it's up, no longer than 30 minutes because any longer and you've lost their interest. It goes it will go through the spelling patterns and rules that are required for the children to learn by the end of key stage one, which is in our national curriculum. So like I say, this is what I can tell you about the spelling program. Now, I know that's a really small slide. I'll give you a highlight, but like I say, these are going to be available on the website. So it aims to build on children's knowledge of the alphabetic code that they've learned over the course of foundation stage year one and to teach them to spell with confidence and use that knowledge to help them. Sometimes the children think that spelling is different to phonics, but it isn't. It's all part and parcel of the same thing. There's three parts to the programme. So like I said, there's a phase five review when, that they're doing now. Then after half term, we'll be doing bridge to spelling. And then the spelling will kick in from the spring term. Um, and those resources have yet to be released. So it's very fresh and hot off the press. Um, the phase five review is autumn one, like I said, bridge to spelling autumn two. And the lessons are taught daily up to 30 minutes, five days a week. When we get to the spelling units after Christmas, there'll be shorter sessions, 15 minutes, four times a week, but they will use the fifth day for revision and it links directly to the national curriculum spelling requirements. All the lessons will follow the same familiar structure that the children are used to from their phonics lessons in foundation stage year one. So it helps them because then they'll know exactly what stage of the lesson they're at and what they're expecting. And that help with the learning um, and they'll continue to use their phonic knowledge to support that. So that's the spelling. So this is the spelling expectations at the end of key stage one. So you can see what is expected. I've highlighted in the green box what working at expected. So that's where we want all children to be. So they're expected to be able to segment spoken words into phonemes and represent these by graphemes. Hopefully you can remember what phonemes and graphemes are. Phonemes, what you can hear. Graphemes, what you can see. Spelling many of these words correctly and making phonetically plausible attempts at others. And spell many common exception words, which I'll come on to. Working at greater depth, so that's, how, that's where we're going to challenge our children, those that are able and ready, um, to spell most common exception words and add suffixes to spell most words correctly in their writing. We still cover prefixes and suffixes working at expected level, but it's seeing that more consistently in their writing and using a range of them. So that's just to give you an idea of the expectation. These are common exception words. They're, really, they're funny words. They're words that are most commonly used. Um, and some of them are will incorporate the tricky words that the children have learned, that they're not ones that you can stand up. But there was I always say to the children, there's always clues in the words to help us. You know, you can hear the beginning and the end sounds often. And then it's just the bit in between that we need to remember. And it is a case of repetition and practice with these words to then be able to spell them without because we can't use our phonetic knowledge to be able to do that. If you'd like a list of these words, then please do ask. I don't think they're on the website. We can always add them if that's useful for you. If your child, I mentioned this earlier, if your child's still working on their phonics or they didn't quite meet the expected standard um, in the year one phonics screening check, we will still be continuing to target and do keep up work with those children in order for them to pass it um, when we retake it in year two. So um, when the year ones do it in June, any that didn't quite meet the expected standard will then um, take it as well. And most of the time, unless there's a, la a language difficulty or a special need there, all the children pass second time. Some children, like anything, any learning or new learning, whatever you're doing, we all learn at different rates and speeds. So, so you know, for some, we just need a bit longer. Um, so we don't forget that we carry on um, because we know it's a really important tool for the children's reading and their writing. 
So that's me finished. I've rattled through that. I hope that was um, useful. Um, when I know more about the spellings programme, I will share it with you um, and I'll highlight things for you that would be useful. Um, but if you've got any questions, you're welcome to ask them now, or if you prefer, you can always email them in and I'd be happy to ask them, answer them. I'm presuming by the silence that there's no questions, which is great. But like I say, if you'd rather ask privately, then please do. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I hope that was useful and um, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Is it sorry, just one request. Is it yeah. possible to send out the common exception words? So I'll yeah, make the yeah. decision on behalf of us all that it would be helpful. Maybe maybe it could go on a year two email for the week or something like that, just so we've all got the right version. That'd be great. Yeah, it won't be today, but bear with no, me. No, 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 that's fine. It but then next. we've all got it. <laughs> if not, I'll just send it out as an email to you. OK, thank you. Anything else from anyone? No? Nope. OK, well, thanks very much. I'm going to stop the recording now.